Molly Quinn. I'm a board certified reproductive endocrinology and infertility specialist here at HRC Pasadena. Today, I'd like to talk about fertility preservation or egg freezing, something that's become a lot more common in the last 10 to 15 years. A lot of patients ask, when is the right time to pursue egg freezing? So the younger we are, the higher the quality of the eggs, the higher the chance for success on a per egg basis. One thing that's really important to discuss is that egg freezing or fertility preservation does not impact your future fertility. And we should take a moment to reflect why that is. So when we do fertility preservation cycles, we're giving injections, we're giving medication to try to convince all the follicles that kind of came of age, so to speak, that month to grow and develop to a stage at which the eggs within those follicles can be harvested. We are not tapping into the next month's pop fluid collections or we are not tapping into the next month's follicle store egg stores, nor are we hastening menopause in any way. So with fertility preservation, we have the opportunity to freeze eggs at a younger age, and the associated quality will be similar to a cohort of fresh eggs at that same age. So even if somebody comes back to use their frozen eggs a decade later, their eggs will always perform as if they were the age when the individual underwent the egg retrieval process. We do guide and teach patients how to do this such that after the first night, most patients feel like this is something they can do. So over the course of about 10 to 12 nights, we're doing two to three injections per night, and then we're seeing you all frequently here in the office, maybe four to six office visits over the course of two weeks. We want to encourage all of the eggs that are available for a given month to grow and develop. So these injections serve that purpose. The culmination of this is an egg retrieval. The egg retrieval procedure is done under anesthesia. The patient is completely asleep and feels nothing in that process. All the anesthesia is given intravenously, so patients are breathing on their own, but they are asleep and they don't feel anything. There is an ultrasound probe that goes in the vagina with a needle attached to it. That needle goes through the wall of the vagina when the patient is asleep and into the ovary to drain these fluid pockets, which we call follicles. Each large follicle should contain an egg. So we should have a sense going into the egg retrieval approximately how many eggs we're expecting. And of course, the more eggs that we are able to retrieve, the better the chance for success should a patient need to come back to use those cohort of eggs. On the day of an egg retrieval, the patient will know how many eggs are retrieved, and the next day they'll know how many were mature. Mature means capable of fertilization, and those are the ones we preferentially freeze away. The day of the egg retrieval is the day that we'd like patients to take off from work. All the rest of the days during a stimulation, patients are generally able to go about their day-to-day -day from the standpoint of doing their work. Uh, but the day of an egg retrieval, since you receive anesthesia, best to go home, rest, relax. Two weeks following an egg retrieval, most patients have undergone a period, and that's a good sign that ovaries have returned to their baseline in terms of size and hormone levels are back to normal. Most patients will be eligible to move forward with their next period or the next month following this initial consultation. Some patients do decide to do more than one fertility preservation treatment cycle. There are a lot of questions about you know, what the optimal timeline is, and for a given individual that might vary, but the data would suggest for large populations it is reasonable to go from back-to-back -back stimulation, so from one retrieval to get a period two weeks later and to start another stimulation process. In terms of yield, we would expect the yield to be very similar if one goes initially into another stimulation versus waiting out a month or two. And of course, there may be personal reasons, either scheduling um, or just emotional reasons to take a month or two off in between stimulation cycles, but all of this can be part of your individualized treatment plan.